Welcome to Good News for a Change, a video and audio podcast on the Gospel with Father Constantine Lazarakis of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary Greek Orthodox Church of the Hamptons in Southampton, New York. In this episode, Reflections on Grace and Works. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, my dad... Not this dad, Father Alex, my dad Gus, back in Salt Lake City, Utah, blessed memory. He was a painting contractor, right? Old Greek guy, he was awesome. He was a lot of fun, thick accent, practically illiterate, hardworking guy. And he had five trucks, right, for his business. He had five trucks, so the guys would go paint a house here and they'd go paint a house there and he'd have to chase after them. And uh, as a painting contractor with, you know, airless compressors, so you're spraying paint on the sides of buildings and stuff, the trucks, they get pretty messed up pretty fast, you know? So my dad used to tell me on Sundays after church, after church, he would say to me, I'll give you 20 bucks a truck. A lot of money in the 80s, you know? And it, they were hard to clean, you know, because there's paint on them, you know. Sometimes you have to, like, break out an SOS pad, which I know sounds silly, but that's what we did. So I would go out sometimes on Sundays, and I'd spray down the trucks with water, and I'd get out the soap and the sponges and the SOS pads, and I'd scrub down the trucks. Take me, you know, a couple hours to wash all five trucks. Give me 20 bucks. What is that, 20 times 5, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 bucks? So one day, after I washed the trucks, I went in the house, and I said, Hey, Dad, I think you owe me a hundred bucks. And his face just fell. I, I can't even describe it to you, how it hurt him. And he said to me, Kristaik, I gave you all this. Now you think I'm owing you something. And he gave me the $100, right? And he said to me, we had an agreement, but I give you the 100 bucks because I love you. I love that. We had an agreement, but I'll give you the 100 bucks because I love you. This morning, I decided that we shouldn't focus on the gospel reading, which is a beautiful gospel reading, and we've preached several times in our church on it. This morning, I thought we would focus on the critically important words of St. Paul that were read during the epistle. And St. Paul tells us that salvation is given by grace alone and not by works of the law. Salvation is received from God by faith and grace and never by works. And it is so much like what my father said to me. We know what we have to do to be saved. We know what we have to do to have a good relationship with God. We know what we have to do to cultivate spiritual growth. But we can never believe that we receive salvation, that we grow spiritually, that we know God because we did those things. It's kind of a paradox. Those are the things I have to do to open myself up to what God has already given me. How come my dad owed me a hundred dollars? Right? It was his and my mother's genetic material that gave me my body. It was their hard work that gave me my home. It was their hard work that gave me my food. It was their hard work that saw to my education. It was their hard work that kept clothing on my back. And now I'm going to turn to them and say, you owe me. It doesn't make sense. We agreed and he's going to keep his agreement. But the agreement is not based on what he owes me. It's based on his love for me. And isn't it so with God? Isn't it so with God? He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. The Gospel of John tells us that He brought everything into being and nothing that was, was without Him. 
It's a good tongue twister. Nothing that was, was without him. He is the source of all existence. He sustains all of creation. In the psalm and in the horthros, we say, let every breath praise the Lord because every breath is a gift from him. So how then, by my following the Ten Commandments, by my feeding the poor, by my keeping a prayer rule, how then could I take something from God? He's already given it all to me. How could I then have an account with him of what is coming to me, when indeed all that I have should be going to him? Right? So it's extraordinary. Now this idea of faith and works is so great. So I want to talk about two things before we wrap up today. I want to talk about what the grace of God is. And we've kind of hinted at it all over already. And then I want to say in that context of understanding what God's grace is, what then is the role of good works in our salvation? The grace of God, right? is his infinite, abounding, wanton, indulgent love for his creation. You know the Greek expression, hazobaba? Raise your hand if you're familiar with that term, hazobaba. That's what they used to call me when my kids were little, right? Because when you're a hazobaba, you think your kids can do no wrong, and you do anything for them, and you go to the ends of the earth, and you just can't help but smile and be excited and love them when you're with them. That is the God we believe in. Right? How many times did the children of Israel go away from God and worship idols and forsake his prophecy? You know, they ran away from him and then they come back to him when they were down and out. And he always received them with open arms. Sometimes with instruction, sometimes with punishment, but always at the end of the day with a loving embrace. And that is the grace of God. We read in the Bible that the angels in heaven rejoice over the repentance of one sinner. We read in the parable of the prodigal son that when the father who was betrayed by his son, and make no bones about it, that father was betrayed by his son. When the father sees his son approaching from far off, he drops what he's doing. He leaves his estate and he runs to greet his son. He puts the robe on him. He puts the ring on him. He kills the fatted calf to celebrate his return. That love that only a parent can know for a child, and I'm sorry to the kids in the room who haven't had kids, that love that only a parent can know for a child, that is the love that God has for each and every one of us. And that is the extent to which he wants to save us. And that is his grace. His love was so great, God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have life eternal. So if I can't earn my salvation, and if God's going to save me out of love, even if I'm a terrible sinner, what role then do works have in my life? Why should I bother to observe the fast? Why should I bother to try to feed the hungry? Why should I bother to try and harness in the jealousy that rages in my mind and gut and heart? Why should I bother to do these good works if I'm already there with God? Well, here's our answer. Um, you ever see oil sit on top of water? Right? You ever see oil sit on top of water? They're incompatible. One can't receive the other, right? And so I can give oil as much water as I want to, but oil is incompatible with water. And likewise, if my heart is hard, if my heart is impervious to God's grace, to God's love, He can give me all the love He wants, but if I'm going to refuse it the way that oil refuses water, 
then I still am in jeopardy of eternal suffering. Right? And there are many theologians who say this is really what the judgment of God is. It's not God saying, oh, I'm so mad at you, I'm going to judge you. It's us unable to receive his love. Right? The sun shines on the righteous and the sinners alike. The difference is the sinners are burned by the sun. It's not about what the sun is doing. The sun does the same thing to everybody. It's about one's receptivity to it. And so it is with God's love. But the wonderful thing is that we're dynamic as human beings. I'm not the same guy I was when I was 10. I'm not the same guy I was when I was 20. I'm not the same guy I was when I was 30. And hopefully with your prayers, by the time I'm 50, I'll be a better guy than I am today. So because we are dynamic, I may be incompatible with God's love today. My heart may not be receptive to it, but I can cultivate receptivity to God in my life. And how do I do that? I do that with works. I do that by coming to church, by being a member of this community. I do that by hearing the words of the gospel. I do that by struggling with the message of the gospel. I do it through prayer. I do it through fasting. I do it through almsgiving. Good works for those who are suffering. So today, let us never fool ourselves and think that we can earn our salvation. But let us spend time and effort every day in spiritual discipline so that we can make our hearts receptive to God's grace, which has already been bestowed upon us. I thank you for your attention. I pray that God continues to bless and keep each and every one. You've been listening to Good News for a Change, a video and audio podcast on the Sunday Gospel with Father Constantine Lazarakis. To hear more, visit the Orthodox Christian Network at myocn.net. That's myocn.net.